Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animal Orange, and welcome to another Metal Earth build. Today we are going to address a viewer request for this cat dozer right here. And unfortunately they no longer make the cat dozer model, but I had picked this up right around the time that they made the announcement it was getting ready to retire. Or I shouldn't say made the announcement, but when I learned that they were getting ready to retire them, I grabbed this and one other cat model. This has been requested that I build this. So let's start putting it together. Now this is kind of an older packaging, so it's before they started doing the little difficulty scale on the back, but online is listed as an expert level. And well, let's go over to the table, open up the package, see what's inside, talk about it, put it together, and see is this an expert level model or not. Let's go to the table. Let's open up the dozer and see what's inside. Now, while I'm opening this, I made the comment at some point that well I think you might still be able to get this or the newer models that came out they've reissued the dozer I don't I think the dozer is the one thing they haven't reissued in the newer line of models but anyway we've got one two three metal sheets not a big surprise I believe this is one of the early models that had more than two sheets in it we have two pieces of paper for the instructions. Big old cat logo. We're going to open this piece of paper up. I'm going to go over the instructions kind of briefly, just so anyone who's new to this get an idea of what's going on. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the instructions. Open up page one. And page one is the one that has the logos on it. We've got the cat logo. We've got the Metal Earth logo. We've got a line drawing of the model. We've got a 360 view. You can either go to this website, type it in, on whatever or scan this QR code with a device that can do that it'll take you to where you can see a 360 view of this completed this model finished model for reference sakes and that comes in handy sometimes below that we have a sample part notation on insertion holes insertion tabs and fold lines tabs go into the holes or slots to connect things together and fold lines are pre-scored areas where you bend or shape the part. We have the very simplified legend over here with E is the engraved. Is stands if you see the E somewhere, it's pointing at the engraved side or detailed side of the part. N E is the non-engraved side, which the non-engraved side sometimes that's just plain silver. Sometimes it has engraving on it, but it's usually fold lines. And the hand, the pointy finger, is telling you that you know this is something you need to pay attention to. It's an attention point. Usually that has to do with alignment. It's trying to tell you to make sure this section is facing this way or these things are lined up this way every now and then there's wording to go with it to explain you what you need to be paying attention to below that we have basically an extension of the legend in later models they combine this together blue circle been around for a while blue circle and green triangle when you see a blue circle next to a connection point it's saying to insert the tab fold it over 90 degrees when you see the green triangle it's saying to insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees and then a little note down here when you're twisting tabs, pull and twist kind of creates a tighter tighter connection. Beside that we have one of the sheets, a line drawing of one of the sheets, the metal sheets that came in the kit with numbers beside it. If we go over to the top of page two we have the other two. I'm going to grab one of the sheets as an example. I believe I have grabbed this one here. and You can kind of see that this is a drawing of this sheet and all the part numbers all these numbers are pointing at the parts to tell you what part is what now also note that not everything but some things are colored in things that are colored the same for instance this here is 25 it's marked 25 the one below it's colored the same color it's not marked those are the same part anything that's colored the same is the same part because oftentimes symmetry you've got one part on this side you've got the same part on that side I love that they started doing that. It saves on the amount of numbers going around. Simplifies things. You can also see there's also a 25 here and 25 here. So yeah, below that starts the assembly flow chart really quickly. Start off with part one, part two, part three. Two and three are duplicate parts, so you can find more than one on the sheet. This is basically showing you to curve that. You curve this, you attach it to part one. It's showing you which way the engraved side is going. This little arrow is indicating to kind of fold this part a little bit and you end up with this it's also indicating that these tabs are folded right 
never mind. The triangle is saying that these things are connected with the twisted tabs. This part actually has more arrows indicating that these two pieces fold over and those tabs fold over and you end up with this. There's a lot going on in this one example. We'll go to the next one just in case. We got four. Four looks like that. You got five times two. So you got to clip out two fives, fold them like that. They attach here with folded tabs. You come over here, it looks like that. You fold the sides down so that they look like that. You come over here and it looks like you all oh, you attach this to the top of what's over here and you end up with that. There's a lot going on in a small space, but I hope that makes sense to you. You're basically it's showing you how to bring the parts together and fold them. You have arrows pointing how things attach. You've got arrows, blue arrows showing how things are folded, like here. And that's the gist of how this goes. You've got assemblies and sub-assemblies. The big red arrows show you what direction to go in a particular area. Sometimes things get reversed. And just go through the steps and put the pieces together as shown. When you get to the bottom of this page, you flip over to page three, follow it. After that, it's page four, of course, follow that. Once you get done with that, you grab the next sheet, open it up, find page five, and continue on until you get to the end. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces. And then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. For shaping a lot of curves and dome shapes and whatnot, you'll see me use an array of 3D printed tools that I've designed that you can find on my Etsy if you're interested. Otherwise, I've, you'll also see me pull out a cheap drill bit set that I have that's not sharp for shaping cylinder shapes, or just look around your house and use objects that you find, like dowel rods, pencils, maybe some beads to shape certain things. I have a sculpting set here that I occasionally use. And they have all kinds of different shaped ends on them. Some flat, some angled, some spoon. There's a couple of hooks. They're useful for reaching in and bending and pushing and pulling tabs and shaping parts from the inside. We've talked about some tools. We've talked a bit about the instructions. We've got the basic tools to get us started. Metal sheets and instructions at the ready. Let's put this thing together. I often use the flat nose pliers to squish the round parts around the drill bit to help shape them. I twisted the tabs but gave them a little pinch in to make sure they don't keep the sides from folding over.
Now we need to repeat the first few steps to create the part for the other side. Make sure to fold over the tabs holding on these little boxes. You need it to leave room inside for something else.
Partina, the exhaust stack, fold up rather thin, and I have a trick for dealing with parts that fold up into a thin square. I like to bend the center bend just a little first to sort of break the tension, then fold up the outer flaps at the full 90 degrees, then, using my fingers, pinch together the outer corners and collapse the middle bend into a 90 degree angle. It usually works pretty well. Just be a little careful when you bend. Sometimes I have to pinch the outer areas a little to get things nice and square. I folded backwards, no worries.
The instructions say to twist these tabs, but for one, there is not a lot of room, and for another, there are some other tabs in the way. I folded them over instead. I folded this tab outward to keep it from getting in the way of connecting to the other parts. I did the same for the tab at the end of the previous assembly. There was a little more room here to twist the tabs. There was a fair amount of clipping parts out from inside other parts and cleaning up parts in this model. Part 23 folds so that the detail is sunk in. The side flaps fold upwards. Also, you need to fold two Part 23s, a detail which I initially missed. Also, Part 23 connects to the back side of 22. This is part 24. I initially thought that there were only two parts that attached to 22 and both of them attached on the back side. I folded the side flaps the wrong way at first. I should fold these back as 24 attaches to the front side of 22. I realized my mistake and that I missed the other part 23. Be sure to maneuver this track side piece so that the ends are behind the outer edges of the previous assembly before attaching the tabs.
I attached one end to part 25 together and bent the tabs at the other end at 90 degrees to prepare for attaching this part to the rest of the assembly. I did not, however, pay attention to the fact that the slots attaching the tracks are offset, and I should be placing it so that the tabs are offset away from the assembly. I put it on backwards. Perhaps that is why I ran into a fair amount of trouble attaching some of the tabs. I didn't figure this out until after I built the track for the other side.
forgot to mention this on the other side, but I held the inside of this part with tweezers while I bent over the sides because the inside is so thin. I was worried it would warp. And again, I am bending the tab outwards on the end to keep it out of the way of attaching the three sections together. I managed to twist one tab on this side, but the other I had to fold because the tabs were in the way.
I had a much easier time attaching the treads on this side. I'm thinking that is because I had attached the tracks properly with the slot offset to the outer part of the tread. I ended up going back and pulling the treads off the other side and flipping them around. That brings us to the end of part one. We're about halfway through this build. We've got a good start with the tracks and some of the body. We've got to finish putting the rest of it together. That's going to be in part two. This is kind of a long build. Not quite as long as some of the ones that I've done recently. Four and a half hours though is still a pretty good time. I'll see you in part two where we pick up where we left off and finish putting this complicated model together.